It is a wonderful day. It is gorgeous out. It is Palm Sunday as we gather for a time of festive worship at St. Mark's. No matter who you are or where you are on a nice journey, you're welcome here as we gather to worship God. And our goal is to treat every person as a child of God. And no one has the right to treat someone or anyone like they do not matter. These are words we attempt to live by. We're blessed by everybody being here today. There are several announcements I'd like to make this morning, and then I'm going to the back because we're having a processional hymn for Easter or Palm Sunday. You'll notice that the opening hymn is a hymn entitled The King of Glory. We're going to be singing verses 1 through 4 of that because the last one talks about Jesus rising from the dead. And that's next week. So we're not going to be doing that then. And the bulletin has changed from when it was printed. Patty was out of the office this past week. And so we have an addition after the children's time. St. Mark Apello will be singing. So we are going to be blessed by their time here. The flowers on the altar are sponsored in honor of Big Reggie in celebration of his birthday, which he's going to celebrate on April 2nd. And this is from his family. And Reed is not yet 60. He still has a few decades to go. So um, I mean, he's not yet 90. He has, still has a few decades to go. Um, for some reason, the number 60 is caught in my mind. I do not know why. Um, we have special worship this week on Thursday evening. It's Monday, Thursday. We have worship with Holy Communion at 7 p.m. On Friday night, we have worship, which is a very special, unique kind of worship for Good Friday that will also be at 7. On Saturday from 3 to 5 is the annual Easter egg hunt with crafts, a story, and pizza, and snacks to share. And that is over in the Fellowship Hall. And next Sunday, we have our Living Cross service before worship and Easter worship with Holy Communion at 10.30. And I'm hoping everyone is able and willing to come. You will probably notice the church is decorated for Palm Sunday. A special thank you to Michael Sands for doing that. He always does a wonderful job making sure the palms are in a good spot. And speaking of palms, as you are leaving worship today, there are palms in the back. And we're going to be asking ushers if you can make sure everybody goes home with a palm. We're going to continue with our worship now, and let us take time to express God's peace with one another.
we may one day enter in triumph the city not made by human hands, the new Jerusalem, eternal in the heavens, where with you and the Holy Spirit, Christ lives in the glory of heaven. Forgive us, O oh God, the times we fall short by faith in you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Thank you. 
21, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt over there. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were asking, This is, we're saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. May God add his wisdom to our understanding of these words. The sermon will now be given by the Reverend Dr. John Manson. <coughs> Yeah. 
carried away with the excitement himself. He said that the whole city was in turmoil, and the Greek word he used was it caused an earthquake. Everyone was, in the immortal words of Elvis Presley, all shook up. The parade didn't just cause a ripple, it caused a major tidal wave in Jerusalem that day in the spring. Jesus had disrupted the status quo. And he had to deal with a group of people in the city who loved the status quo. Some were the Jewish leadership, some were the Gentiles who had a peaceful coexistence with their neighbors and the Romans, and some were the Romans. They all had one thing in common, they wanted to maintain the status quo. Don't shake things up. There were people in the crowd who were happy and excited and thrilled. There were people in the crowd who had an exact opposite reaction. This guy was troubled, and we better face this. Who did he think he was coming into town? I often think about the word that is often used to describe the death of Jesus. It's the word passion. And we use this word to describe this was the passion of Jesus. That first Palm Sunday was a day filled with passion. Some people were filled with passions and they loved every minute of it. All their hopes and dreams and aspirations of the world were there riding on a donkey into town with Jesus and they were excited. Nothing this good had ever taken place before. Jesus' passions were running deep as well. He used his passion to love the crowd, to do great things. He used his passion to love individuals. His passion also turned to anger when he drove out the money changers in the temple. And there were the passions of people who wanted to maintain the status quo as well. They were passionately angry that Jesus was confronting them with everything they held near and dear to their hearts. Jesus had disrupted the status quo. Some were happy and some were very uncomfortable. They weren't nice about it and neither was Jesus. He wasn't nice to the people who controlled the temple and they weren't nice to him. We often like to picture Jesus as the sweet-tempered guy, you know, sort of perpetually on medication, smiling, don't worry, be happy. I often think that that's an image we see of Jesus in all of television shows. All this swirling chaos is going around, and there's Jesus, half smiling, I'm happy. <clears throat> Jesus wasn't always very mellow, and he wasn't always very nice. He was a perpetual truth teller. And he was always confronting falsehoods whenever they came in front of him. He was a passionate guy, and this was a passionate day. And sometimes those passions are things we don't always carry with us in our faith. And sometimes within our faith, we are not always terribly passionate. We like to be mellow and nice as Christians. And sometimes those passions are are good. Sometimes the mellow and nice isn't always that honest. When I was growing up, I was in middle school, and a woman who lived next door to us loved to cook really bad food. And she loved to share the really bad food with us. And one night she made some food for us, and we started making it for supper, and my mother made something else because she had a lot of experience with this woman's food. And it was really bad. It was really, really bad. We gave it to the dog, and the dog wouldn't eat it. <laughs> I don't know, how many of you here have ever had a dog? What don't dogs eat? Dogs will eat, they're, they're sort of mobile eating machines. The dog wouldn't eat the food. She went over, sniffed it, sniffed it, and walked away, looking at us like, you got to be kidding. And my parents threw away the food, they washed the plate, and said, bring the plate back over and tell her thank you for 
the delicious food. Can we have the recipe? <laughs> These were the same people telling me who told me, don't ever lie. <laughs> and I was saying, wait, that's a lie. You didn't like it. I didn't like it. My brother and sister didn't like it. The dog didn't like it. It was really bad. You told me never to lie. Well, why? Why this time? This is called a good lie. And I'm like, what's a good lie? Don't worry about it, I'll tell you some other time. So I brought the dish back and said, it was very good. She gave us the recipe. We like that kind of thing. We like that mellow and niceness that we have. And mellow and peacefulness within faith is good. But Jesus wasn't always that mellow. It sometimes thinks it could have been a peaceful day for Jesus, but he was honest. A Spanish philosopher named Unimo used to say to his friends, May God deny you peace and give you glory. And sometimes I think as Christians we need to learn to be more passionate. And sometimes I think we need to care less about peace and seek that glory. And sometimes I wish people would scare the pants off of me in their honest search for glory in church. It would really scare the pants off me one day if a group of people told me we needed an all-day Bible study to understand one of the Gospels. It would scare the pants off me if one day in the middle of a sermon somebody stood up and said, you know, John, that's really boring. Can you start over? <laughs> it would scare the pants off of me if somebody said, you know, our nation is in a painful spot. Can we have a prayer vigil all night to pray for the nation? It would scare the pants off me if somebody came up and said, we need to double the budget. And all the members of the church would say, amen, let's do it and pay it. Scare the pants off me if somebody would interrupt the hymn and say, we needed to sing it with more passion and zeal. I scare the pants off me. But scare the pants off me if passion surfaced, then we really, really, really demonstrated a passionate love for God and one another. And that's something that Jesus did. That is the kind of status quo that Jesus shattered that day in Jerusalem. A minister named Joseph Gilmore once wrote, Let there be a parade in our lives, at least once. Only once let us rush into the streets, laughing and shouting, led by our hearts, become listless from loitering. Just once let us dance before God in spite of the signs say. Let us slap each other on the back in the delight of all the wonderful punchlines of God's unfolding story. Blessed are those who, like Jesus, are unafraid to ride a donkey and into the heart of darkness. Everyone loves a parade. May God deny each of us peace and give us glory that we can ride in the parade with all of our passions flowing bravely. But even though it seems to us that we are tilting at windmills, it is what we have to do. May God deny us peace and give us glory. Amen.
in everything we say and everything we do, that we might always seek your glory. And as we gather today, we pray for needs, for healing presence. We remember Dean Wolsey. Dean is the mother of Ken and Jane, and she's going to be having surgery in Mexico on a broken hip at noon today. So we ask that you be with Dean and Ken and Jane and their granddaughter who's down with them. We pray for the families of those who have lost loved ones in that tremendous <coughs> crash in Europe. It's a difficult time and painfully divided time within our own, within our own state, within our own community. I let us pray for your healing presence in our midst of God. Tom Wint is having surgery on Tuesday. We ask that your healing hand be with them as he has that surgery. And a friend of Mary, uh, Mary Lee and Bill Legan, Jane Hadman, died this past week. And we ask that you be with her family during this difficult time. Anybody else like to add someone up to pray for? For needs? March Girls.
use these gifts to shake up the world with your love. Sometimes we say words over and over again that are very meaningful, and we say them in such a way that we're not really paying attention. So I'm going to ask with our permission, I'm going to say each line and ask you to repeat it after. So we do it a little slower and more reflect. Let us go forth into the world in peace. Let us go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint hearted. Strengthen the faint hearted. Support the weak. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Lord. 